All right, we have a few more examples to get through. Uh, let's take a look at this one. 27 to the 2x minus 5 is equal to 81 raised to the 4x plus 1. All right, so as we've been showing, we have to find the common base for these guys. And again, if you have your power sheet, it should be pretty easy to identify. Like, where does 27 show up? So 27, that being the smaller of these two numbers here, maybe you recognize this. You say, well, I know that 27 is 3 to the third. I work with that guy a lot. Okay, well, if that's 3 to the third, uh, what would 3 to the fourth be? Because you know, um, if you're trying to find 81, and what is it, you know, does it have a, is it based off of a 3? It's got to be more than 3 to the third. So if you look at 3 to the fourth, and you look at your power sheet, you're going to find out that that's 81. So these guys have a common base of 3. So we're going to rewrite each of these. 27 becomes... As we have shown there on the right, 3 to the third raised to the 2x minus 5. 81 we're rewriting as 3 to the fourth all raised to the 4x plus 1. All right, so again, powers to powers, no surprise here. The thing, again, that you have to watch out for is to make sure that you distribute correctly. Make sure you multiply correctly. So I'm going to have 3 raised to the now distribute 3 times 2x is 6x 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. on the right side we have uh, 4 times 4x so that's a base of 3 4 times 4x is 16x and 4 times 1 is 4. make sure that you distribute correctly make sure you multiply correctly and everything's going to be fine we have here each side of the equation written with the common base which is 3. So we can now equate those powers and say that 6x minus 15 is equal to 16x plus 4. Now this is a nice linear equation. Our job is to get all the x's to the same side, get constants on the other side, but you want to make sure that you do this in such a way that the coefficient of x stays positive. At least that's what I like to do. So I'm going to move my variable to the right. So I'm going to subtract 6x. And if I'm moving my variable to the right, that means my constant needs to go to the left. So I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. And we have negative 19 is equal to 10x. All right, one step away from finishing the problem. So divide both sides by 10, divide by 10, and we are left with x is equal to negative 19 over 10. All right, doesn't look to be too bad. Now, before we go into the next problem, let's check this with our graphing calculators, okay? It really shouldn't be too much to check this. So here's what I want you to do. So to check, I don't want you to have to like re rewrite and replace all the x's with negative 19 over 10. Instead, we're gonna cheat a little bit. We're gonna type in negative 19 divided by 10. And instead of hitting enter, uh, if you look down here, you see there's a button that says STO with a little arrow. Well, that's the store button. So if I press that button, you'll see that I now have an arrow. And what I can do with that arrow is I can say, I want you to take this value, whatever it is, and I want you to store it into something. Well, the easiest thing is to store it into X. So I'm going to press X. And so now, on this calculation screen, anytime I type X, the calculator is going to interpret that as negative 1.9. For example, if I do 2x, that's 2 times negative 1.9, so I should get negative 3.8. Right? I mean, th that seems to be expected. So let's go back to our original equation right here. Let's type in 27 raised to the... Now, you're going to notice that on this particular version, I've got a little superscript right here. So I'm going to change this real quick, because I want to make sure that if you're using a regular scientific calculator that it looks the same way. So if I do 27 and I do the power button, it's going to look like that. 
So if you do have one of those TI um, graphing calculators with a two-line display, it's going to look like this. So you have to use parentheses. And then here's what you're going to do. Just type in 2x minus 5. Now again, the calculator is going to interpret this with x being negative 1.9. And I get some crazy number, really small because you see the e there, so times 10 to the power of negative 13. Let's go to the other side here, 81 raised to the parentheses again because you have that group that you're trying to plug in, 4x plus 1, 4x plus 1. Now, if the x value that we came up with, the negative 1.9, if that is our solution, when I hit enter, I should get the same crazy looking decimal that I had above. And I do. So that's just verification that our answer here is correct. A nice, easy way to check your work. Okay. And we'll do another example, and we'll also come back and use the graphing calculator to check that so that you can see another example of how to check, how do we get our answers. Remember, I'm not having the calculator do the work for me. I'm just having it check my work. All right. So let's solve 8 raised to the x plus 3 is equal to 1 over 4 to the x. All right, so we need to find a common base between these guys. And don't worry so much that 4 is in the denominator. We understand that being in the denominator, he's going to end up with a negative power. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. The big picture is identifying the common base for 8 and 4. It's not 4 because you can't raise 4 to a nice power to get 8. So we've got to go smaller. What's 4 made up of? We know that 4 is made up of 2 times 2, so it's really 2 squared. And 8 can also be rewritten as a power of 2 because 8 is 2 to the third. All right, so raised to the x plus 3. Now, this x right here, I'm just going to let him be on the outside of this expression. And how do we rewrite 4? Well, we do know that it's 2 squared, but this 4 was in the denominator, so that means it's going to be negative 2. Excuse me. So, we now have a common base, so we need to rewrite and work with these expressions. So this is 2. Remember, power to power, you're going to multiply. This becomes 3x plus 9. On the other side here, you're going to multiply these guys. Again, power to a power. So that's 2 to the negative 2x. And now, these guys have the same base. And since they have the same base, we can set these powers equal to each other. So 3x plus 9 is equal to negative 2x. Now, normally I would move that, you know, this negative 2x to the other side, so I have a positive coefficient, but this is the only place where I have my constant term, so I think I'm actually going to move my variables to the right this time. So let's subtract 3x on both sides. All right, so 9 is equal to negative 5x. And we finish solving by dividing both sides by negative 5. When I do this and I simplify, I have negative 9 over 5. Seems good enough. Uh, let's go to our graphing calculator and let's check. Now, remember the last time we had x was equal to negative 1.9. We, we put that in there. So if I still use that same x, I'm going to be in trouble. Now, you don't have to clear anything out. You just need to say negative 9 divided by 5. Press that store button again, and now press x. And what we've done, OK, that's very close to the last answer. That is just a coincidence, so don't get alarmed. Um, so now I've got this answer in here instead of the negative 1.9. So let's check this. I have 8 raised to the parentheses, x plus 3. If you don't put that in parentheses, it means something entirely different. Uh, here, let me show you what I mean. 
If I do 8 raised to the x plus 3, I get this number right here. And what you're telling the calculator to do is to take 8 raised to the negative 9 fifths power and then add 3. But that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to take 8 raised to the x plus 3, you know, that, that quantity power. So here, the plus 3 is in the power. In this last expression, it was not in the power. It was happening after you did the power. So please make sure that you use the calculator correctly. I'm not going to be there to remind you to use parentheses. You have to practice. All right, so I get 12 points stuff, right? Don't really care too much about that stuff. And then I have 1 divided by, I'm going to do parentheses just to be on the safe side here. That's going to be uh, 4 raised to the x. So we got 4 to the x all, all encased inside that denominator. Let's see what we get. And we get the same decimal value. So that tells me that this answer, this answer is correct. I'm feeling pretty good. How about you?